Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to another weekly series of uh, price action based technical analysis right here on the X Trend Speed Live. Happy Monday to you guys, and I wish you um, a very, very happy new week. Well, before we kickstart the session, let's quickly run through our daily routine. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know in the comment section by typing in I. So I really love to see your feedback, please, so that I can know that we are on the same page and let's kickstart the session. So let's see what we have here in the comment section. <laughs> okay, so we have um, a handful of comments right here. I can see your comment to Hari. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. Um, I see your comment, Ben Tintin. Good morning to you. Vos Lee. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around with us this morning. Um, eight four zero eight from India. Namaste to you. Good morning to you. Glad to have you as well. Hello, Squatter. Good morning to you. Um, hello, Carrie. Hel hello, Carrie. Good morning. How are you doing today? And glad to have you around with us. Hell Gnomes. Good morning to you too. Glad to have you around with us here too this morning. So I think with this um, handful of feedbacks, I will take this as a positive um, confirmation that we are good to go this morning. And it's on this note, I welcome you once again to yet another promising edition of the x Trend Speed Live. My own name is Sharif Daramola. And for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host as we shall be embarking on a trading journey, delving into the financial landscape using simple and fundamental tools such as trend lines, key levels and chart patterns to gain valuable insights into the um, current market structures on our watch list and eventually use the information to unravel the potential trajectory of price action in the days to come. Well, today being the first trading day of the week, um, I sincerely have um, almost five to six assets that I will wish that we look at ahead of the week. And in fact, I have very, very simple and insightful setup that we will be using to guide our decisions. However, if you have any assets you want us to look at for this week, be it commodities, cryptocurrencies, options, stocks, or even currency assets, feel free to drop them in the comment section. This is the right time you can drop any comment sec drop any asset that you want us to look at for the week. And uh, trust me, we shall be including it into our plans for this week. So once again, um, you're highly welcome. Now, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I'm very sure you will be um, wondering what this is all about. Well, as technical traders, we usually gather here on a daily basis to come together as a community and engage in follow-ups and reviews of our current positions in preparation of the New York sessions. This session kickstarts 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, and I recommend that you stay tuned in so you don't miss out on any of the valuable insight that we will be deliberating on throughout the course of the session. My aim here is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary to make informed trading decisions independently. The more time you spend with us, the better you will become at comprehending our analytical approach and utilizing the information gathered here to enhance your own trading decisions and strategies. So once again, I extend a warm welcome to you and of course encourage you to actively engage in the comment section as the more you feel in alignment with the process, the better you get to understand how things works. So once again, you are highly welcome on board. 
So with that being said here, we will be diving right into the business. And you, of course, know how we do it. The first thing we normally do is to check on the economic calendar. And of course, we know how important this is as these fundamental factors often manifest on the chart in technical patterns and price movements. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information needed to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move prior, during, and even after this economic event. Now, based on the asset we are monitoring for this week, based on the ones I have on my watch list, uh, we are going to be focusing on both the United States and the United Kingdom. So we're looking at high impactful event. And for today, Monday, November 20th, we have only one high impactful event, and that is the Bank of England's Governor Bailey speech which will be coming up in about, um, I think, about eight hours from now. And for those who don't know how important this is, as this um, event, this pitch to say, um, usually have considerable influence over the financial market, as whatever the Bank of England governor says today will be providing insight into the central bank's outlook on the economy, potential policy shifts, and potential interest rate changes, hereby impacting our trading decisions and market sentiments. So besides this, this there are no other high impactful events. So what we are going to be doing right now is to dive right into the chat and let's look at things from a technical standpoint. And as usual, the first asset on our watch list for the week is going to be the U.S. All Sports. And as at this morning, we have an interesting set of gradually unfolding on the chat. And in fact, I'm very excited to share with you how we intend to capitalize on the next move as we have a very simple setup to work with. But before we go into the details of what things are looking like here, let's quickly have a brief understanding into some fundamental factors that are likely going to be affecting this asset this week before we delve into the higher time frame. Now, uh, as at this morning, while I was going through the um, financial news, there were, according to some media reports, OPEX Plus may consider deeper supply cuts to bolster prices at its upcoming meeting on November 26, which is viewed as a significant factor providing support to high prices at this particular point in time. Now, um, this is coming up on Sunday, and we don't know what is really going to be happening. We hear by um, this uncertainty right here is building some pressure in the market. Now, is this pressure in favor of sellers, or is it in favor of the buyers at this point in time? Well, let's look at the higher time frame. So I started this week's analysis on the four hours time frame where I was able to identify a simple setup that we will be using to guide our trading decisions for this week. And what I did on the four hours time frame was to take into consideration the nature of price action in the last three to four weeks to decipher what is really going on in this market and if you look at the structure closely you will see that since the mid month of october price action had consistently found lower highs and lower lows and as a result of this transition of price action i'm beginning to see a descending channel which will definitely be what we will be using to guide our decisions for this week now if we connect the series of lower highs we have the resistant line of that descending channel and if we connect the series of lower lows here we have the support line of that descending channel and of course you know how we use descending channels or ascending channels as long as price remains within that range we will continue to look out for trading opportunity that is in alignment with the direction of that channel now in this case scenario price is nose dive into the downside so of course we do want to be looking out 
for selling opportunities. Now, in addition to that um, descending channel, I was able to identify a couple of more levels that we will be using to guide our decisions. But the most important one here is the key level situated at the $76 area. Now, if you look at the structure, you will see how this key level had a $76 area had played a major role in determining the direction of price action um, in the, since the beginning of this month. Now, if you look at this structure closely, you will see we had price break down the key level at the $76 area. We saw a little bit of consolidation phase around this area before price broke out of the structure during the second week of this month. Then since price broke out, we begin to see how that level was serving as a demand zone for a while before price finally broke down the structure during last week's trading session. And of course, we did take advantage of that opportunity. Now, towards the end of last week, we saw how price gradually climbed back and then closed at exactly the $76 area. And you would agree with me at this juncture that this is a crucial juncture we have in this market where price action is back into that key level as at the end of last week. And one interesting thing about this key level is how it shares a beautiful confluence with that descending channel, the resistant line of that descending channel, as you will see right here. Now, the question going into the new week is, will price begin to find selling pressure around the resistant line of the descending channel like it has always been doing in the last three to four weeks to incite selling opportunities to the downside. So what this simply means is that if price drops below our key level and continuous selling pressure persists below the resistant line of that descending channel, we know that we are back within the seller's territory. However, if price action breaks out of the $76 level, price will also have broken out of the descending, the resistant line of the descending channel to further emphasize the strength of the buyers whereby pressure above that structure will be welcoming buying opportunity. So you can see how crucial this current structure is. And what we need to do right now based on the significance of this zone, we want to be scaling down into the lower time frame to see how market participants have been reacting to this juncture since the beginning of the week to um, lay down a plan for this week. But before I scale down into the lower time frame, I quickly want to share with you some interesting features within this descending channel that we need to also take note of while before we make our informed decisions. Now, if you look at the support line of this descending channel, remember whenever we have a channel like this, when price gets into the support line of the channel, we usually see buy pressure resume around that area. So let me give you a visual representation of what I mean here. Now we saw price buy pressure from the support line here, then price came back into the support line again, then we saw price again come back into the support line to make buy pressure and then look at what happened here last week price was unable to get close to the support line which for me is a sign that maybe the sellers are gradually losing the momentum and we might likely be seeing buying opportunities that will break out of the resistant line of that descending channel now with this in mind we want to also um, keep the potentials of buyers open as well. Now, even if price drops below the $76 area, we could see a situation where price was will become unable to break down the lowest point here at the $72.50 area, which could make price action transition to um, a reversal pattern, maybe a double bottom structure where the key level had the $76 area will serve as the neckline to guide our trading decisions, um, buying trading decisions um, as soon as price breakouts retest the neckline area. So these are the things I'm looking at here. And while we've um, dissected the four hours time frame and with the information we have so far, let's scale down into 
the lower time frame to see how market participants have been rehacked into this key level since the beginning of this week. Now, scaling down into the one hour time frame, we will begin to see things more clearly. And this was what I was able to identify here this morning while trying to dissect the current market structure as the first thing I did observe was how price started on a bullish note as we saw price started around the $75.90 area, stroke the $76 area with a bullish momentum. And as soon as price tested the $76.80 area, we saw some selling pressure resume around that area, giving us a beautiful flat channel to work with for this week. So at this point in time, price remains confined within the $76.80 level and of course the $75.90 area to emphasize the level of indecision at this point in time. And of course you do know how we do it in this community, especially when price action falls into a range like this, we want to exercise patience and wait for price action to either break down the support line of the range to give us an opportunity to sell or break out of the resistant line of the range to give us an opportunity to buy. Now, in addition to this range here, remember how crucial price action, um, how crucial this juncture is. Remember we had this descending, sorry, the resistant line of that descending channel, which we identified on the higher time frame right here, and price appears to be trading above that structure. So if price will break out of the resistant line of this range, uh, this will be a beautiful opportunity for us to buy. Then we have our stop losses right below the or close to the key level or below the resistant line of that descending channel to protect our positions against any sudden pullback that could eat into deeper into our portfolio. So on the US all spot at this juncture, I'm looking out for buying opportunities anywhere above the $76.80 area seems reasonable to join a bullish momentum at this point in time. However, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunities, you know how we do it in this community, we want to be as dynamic as possible. We know the financial market is a very fluid environment and we can plan a particular direction and price action goes on in the, in the opposite direction. And of course, if it does that, we also want to be on standby to capitalize on that move. Now, based on the structure we saw on the higher time frame, where we saw price oscillating just exactly around the resistant line of that descending channel, like I said earlier, if price drops below the key level, price will be back within the descending channel, making it our seller's territory. And of course, a retest of structure revealing signs that buyers are finding it difficult to stay above the key level would be a beautiful opportunity for us to join a downtrend move, maybe back into the support line of the descending channel we identified earlier. But at this point in time, based on the momentum that started last week, Friday, and the anticipation of the OPEX Plus meeting coming up on November 26, and the, the popular expectations in the market that there is likely going to be another supply cut, I'm holding on to a bullish bias here. So anywhere above the $76.80 level makes quite a lot of sense. But if price drops below the key level at the $76 area, then we want to start considering selling. So these are my views on the US All Sport for today. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And um, as usual, I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions whatsoever, while you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chat as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today's trading session.
All right, so I see a comment here. Hello, Jamakos, good morning to you. Hello, um, um, Truman, Tropiezo, good morning to you guys. Um, I see your comment, Rizirik, I hope I pronounced that correctly. You're asking us to do New Zealand, USD, right? Okay, um, let's see what we can do on that one, all right? And then, um, okay, that's that on that one. Then I can see attention viewers. Um, I just identified a spam comment in the section from DeSanti promoting a trader for guaranteed profit, whatever. Please, I want to say here that be very conscious as engaging in such discussions may lead to scams. Remember, extra speed will not be liable for any discussions or transaction outside um, this secure platform. All right, please be wary of this sort of comments they are spams and be really be really wary of them please thank you very much so in the absence of no questions i want to assume that we are all on the same page and in that regard we will be moving on to the next asset on our watch list So the next asset on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. Well, um, we had quite an interesting situation from last week's trading session where it took quite a while before we were able to capitalize on that um, bullish. We had a buying opportunity. We also had the opportunity of selling too as well. And at this point in time, it appears price action is consolidating at a um, a new high at this point in time which is very very peculiar with such market structure so we are going to be looking into the details on how we are going to be managing our positions and get ready for um, the new week so to start with we will be delving into the higher time frame so let me see here where did I start my analysis for this week okay i did start on the four hours time frame so let's move right into the four hours time frame now on the four hours time frame i was able to identify a simple setup after considering the nature of price action since the last week of the month of october so we are looking at an historical data of about three three to four weeks now on this particular asset for our next line of action now if you look at the structure here since the last week of the month of october it is quite clear that the market is on an uptrend situation now look at this closely after monitoring this um, structure i was able to identify an ascendant trend line which of course had played a major role in guiding this bullish momentum in the last three weeks now look at what we have here since price broke above this trend line at the beginning of this month price action had remained above that structure to further emphasize the strength of the buyers at this particular point in time and of course you know how we do it in this community when we have ascendant trend lines like this we have no business selling as as long as price remains above the ascendant trend line we want to be looking out for patterns and structures that supports the idea of buying that asset now as since price remains above the ascending channel ascending trend line we want to be looking out for buying opportunity now in addition to the ascending trend line i was able to identify a couple of more levels that we will be using to guide our decisions for this week now one thing i was able to observe here after that impulsive move we enjoyed um, last week that brought us into this area you will see that since price tested that new high at the 15,970 price action had remained or let me say confined within the range of the 15,970 and the 15,775 level to emphasize the 
level of uncertainty that has gripped this market at this point in time. And of course, whenever we see this kind of situations, you know how we do it in this community. We want to exercise patience and wait for either the breakout of the resistant line for buying opportunities or the breakdown of the support line of the channel for selling opportunities. Now, to make things a little bit more easier for us to be to feel comfortable in any position we will be taking for this week, I was able to identify a key level at the 15,850 level, as you will see right here. This level here played a major role th during the second half of last week, as we saw how it was broken at some point in time here. And since then, price came back again. And since that moment, price had continued to trade below that area, which emphasized some selling strength around the structure. So this level here, because of how it had played a major role, I will be using it as my yardstick to guide trading decisions for this week. Now, you know how we use our key levels here. If price at any point in time breaks out our key level, we want to be looking out for buying opportunity. And if price remains below our key level, we want to be looking out for selling opportunity. Now, I said earlier that price action has been trapped within a range where, of course, if we are going to consider buying, we want to see price break out of the resistant line at the 15,970, right? But if you look at the distance between where price action is right now and that resistant line, we have a whooping of over 120 pips. So one thing I'm looking at here is to see how we can actually buy even before the breakout of that resistant line happens so that we can maximize um, the bullish momentum in this particular market. So if price breaks out of that key level at the 15,850, we want to be looking out for buy pressure above that area to join that bullish move. Then we can now have a buy stop order above the 15,970 to maximize that move to the upside. Now, another interesting thing about this structure is that this structure we have here could still turn out to incite a retracement move that will lead to the breakdown of that ascending trend line for the first time in about three weeks. And one interesting thing about the ascending trend line is how it shares a beautiful confluence with that 15,775 level which happens to be the support line of that range. Now, if price at any point in time this week breaks down that structure, we are likely going to be seeing a bearish momentum to the downside. But at this point in time, considering the impulsive move we witnessed since last week, I'm of the opinion that price will continue to the upside. So in this regard now, and with the information we have gathered here, let's scale down into the lower time frame to see how market participants have been reacting to this current market structure here to make a decision for today's trading session. Now, we are going to be scaling down into the one hour time frame and let's see what we have there. So right now we are back at the one hour time frame. And first of all, um, let's let's acknowledge our key level, which is at the 15,850 right there. OK. And then since the beginning of this week, I have noticed how price was within a wide range that is between the 15,845 level. That was where price started this week. And then the 15,790, though we had a little bit of a breakdown of that structure. But um, with this consolidation phase here, you know we want to see either the breakout of the resistant line or the breakdown of that support line we identified on the higher time frame for selling opportunities. Now price has broken out of this structure. I had a buy stop order above this area already, which has been triggered at this point in time. And for those of you who took advantage of this opportunity, well done and kudos to you for being on standby. Let's see if this momentum will be valid and it will continue to find new highs. And But if you had missed out on that position well keep calm um, the week is still very early and we are likely going to see price do some retracement back into structure maybe to incite an uptrend continuation so 
Let's see how this will play out. We already have a breakout. Let's see price come back into the zone and let's um, wait for reversal setups that gives us signs that buyers are gaining more momentum. Now, if price action continues to climb and find new highs from this level, we also have another level around the 15,000, let me see, 15,880 area. So you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart too as well. So we have the 15,880. So I will place this right at the top. I want to give it a different color to emphasize, to differentiate it from the range we identified at the beginning of the week. I think blue is fine, right? So I want to be seeing more opportunities to buy if price breaks out and takes out the sell positions around that area. So that is how I'm going to be holding on to a bullish buyers on this particular market. Now, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunities, uh, we also want to keep tabs with the potentials the sellers have here. Well, personally, and based on the last um, three to four hours where we saw this engulfing bullish candle, I'm of the opinion that price is likely going to continue to the upside based on the situation. But if at any point in time we begin to notice that price is dropping, and then breaking down that ascending trend line we identified on the four hours time frame, which for me, I think will happen when price break down to 15,790. Uh, so it will take, it might take quite a while before that won't happen. Maybe something like this, find lower highs leading to the breakdown of the 15,790 or the 15,775 area retest of structure giving us beautiful confirmations to join a downtrend move so i will not be selling the us tech 100 today unless price takes out the ascending trend line we identified on the four hours time frame so this is how we are going to be managing our positions on the us tech 100 for this week Currently, price is within a range um, between the 15,800 from a long term view and the 15,775. So, let's see how this will play out in the next couple of hours. And we will be back here tomorrow to review how well this asset has done and how we are going to be preparing for tomorrow's trading session as well. If you have any questions whatsoever as regards to this current setup, or you need some clarifications to an aspect you do not understand, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds as usual to wait for your inquiries and you can as well use that time to mark out these levels on your chart. So I see a couple of comments here. I can see um, Ingivanan, good morning to you. Um, I can see Simon80 says, Hoyle, um, I guess you came in very late. We did all, all was the first asset we took on this morning, unfortunately. So I will encourage you to be part of the, sub of the subsequent edition, that is tomorrow, so that you can be part of the oil session so you don't miss out on that one i can see bicos 354 good morning to you and thank you very much and then hey innocent babe how are you doing today good morning to you um okay <laughs> all right all right it's okay and i'm very good here thank you very much and trust you had a wonderful weekend okay you're waiting for gold sure sure we are going to be taking gold in a moment so stay tuned in all right so in the absence of no other questions um i think i will take this as a confirmation that we are all on the same page and in that regard we shall be moving on to the next financial asset on our watch list so i actually wanted to take on the gbp usd but um there is this uh, person here, Ricey Rick, says we should do New Zealand USD. So because of this, I'll 
I'll take JP USD out of our watch list for this week and include New Zealand USD. And if there is enough time at the end, maybe I could revisit the GBP USD for the sake of the GBP USD funds. So with that being said, now we will be moving on to the next asset, which will be the New Zealand USD, which obviously is not in my watch list. But for the sake of Rice Rick, let's look at what is going on in this particular market. Now, um, the first thing we want to be doing is to capture the momentum of this of price action on the higher time frame so we can have an holistic perspective into what is going on here. Now, I do want to ask, is Ricey Rick in the house? Please let me know in the comment section if you're around so I know if this is what's taking um, for today, please. I would just like to know if you are around and let me know in the comment section before I proceed on this one. But if you're not around, I'll have to go back to the GBP USD instead because it doesn't worth it. Okay, Rice Rick says it's around. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do on this asset is to look at what things are looking like from an holistic perspective, what is going on since the beginning of this year. And if you look at the structure closely, you will see that since the beginning of this year, price action, though a little bit choppy, has been finding some series of, let me say, on in uniform um, lower highs in this particular point in time. Now, if we bring out our line chart to see if we can identify something to work with, I think we will be having a couple of descending trend lines to mark to capture the momentum in this particular market. So we have one right here. So it's more like a series of lower highs here. Then I think we should capture the other one right here. So we have a couple of descending trend lines which we will be using to guide our decisions going forward. So we have this one right here. Now the next thing we want to be doing here is this. Now despite the series of lower highs since the beginning of this year, it is quite clear that since the month of August, price action has been finding it difficult to find new lows. Now, if you look at the structure closely, you will see that as soon as price got into the zone between the 0 0.58500 level and the 0. Um, let's see, 5770 area, we begin to notice some buy pressure around this area so what we are going to be doing in that regard is to identify the zone as a demand zone of course you can see this by the strong bearish momentum sellers have been finding it difficult to break through that area so we shall be labeling this area a demand zone in the meantime as long as price still remains above the structure so we want to be seeing it at um, 0 0.5860 all right 0 0.58600 and then we have the 0 0.5 0 0.57700 level so i like to place this right inside that box and let's give it a white color and then give this one a dark that's a green color and beautiful. So we have our demand zone right here. Now, if you take into consideration the impulsive move that started in the month of July, bringing price into this range, you will see that it appears that price action is gradually transitioning into a reversal pattern, though we don't have a theoretical name for it, but it's more or less a reversal pattern here. And you know how we do it in this community. Whenever we identify such reversal patterns, we want to be marking out the neckline of the reversal pattern, which is needed to be broken to validate the potency of that reversal pattern. And if we move left, in fact, if we go to as far back as the month of May, I think we can have a structure to play around which which falls exactly at a strong psychological level at the 0 0.600 area. And of course, I usually like my key level to be distinct. So I'll give it a, a pink color. And then we label this area the 0 0.6000 um, dollar level. So that is our key level for this week. And of course, you know how we use our key levels in this community. As long as price remains above the key level, 
we want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying. Now we have the neckline of that reversal pattern, which interestingly is going to be serving as our key level for this week. And look at what happened here last week. Between last week Wednesday and last week Friday, we saw price appear to have broken out of that neckline. Now, what we are going to be doing now is to scale down into the lower time frame to see how market participants have been reacting to that structure since the beginning of the week to have a well-informed trading decision. So I would like this, um, this key level to... Um, show itself on the lower time frame as we will be needing it as a yardstick to manage our decisions going forward. Now, with the way things are going right now, the chances that this as descending trend lines will be broken to the upside is increasing at this point. Now, let's scale back down into the one hour time frame to look at what is really going on um, on the on the on the lower time frame. Now, since the beginning of the week, of course. So I would like to allow this key level to reveal itself here. So um, let's have 320 instead. Okay. Um, all right. So we have, we have it like this. So I'll zoom right in and let's look at what has been going on since the beginning of this week. So the week started at around the um, 0 0.59750, another psychological level that is. And if we can mark out... Um, the character of price action since the beginning of this week, we should be having something like this. So we have a beautiful range right now where price action is currently trading between the 0 0.59780, right? So we give this a different color, isn't it? So we give it, um, let me give it a brown. I've been using my brown for my, my coffee brown. Uh, 0 0.59800, right? So we label this one appropriately, 0 0.59800 level. Uh, my usual coffee brown color, and then we place it at the bottom right-hand corner. Then we also going to be having the resistant line somewhere around here, which is exactly at the 0 0.60410, right? 0 0.60410. So we also marked 60410 level. Then we have that at the top right hand corner of our screen. And here we go. So we have a beautiful range. And of course, it's quite obvious that price action is oscillating right around our key level. And in fact, price has broken out of the key level, which interestingly lines up with the expectations of looking out for buying opportunity at this point. Now, um, if you had missed out on this bullish move, well, I want to see price take out the resistant line here to give me opportunities to buy um, the, the NZ New Zealand USD. However, if price action breaks down the support line at 0 0.5980, we could be looking at a short-term downtrend back into that demand zone we identified on the higher time frame and as soon as price gets into that demand zone of course you do want to be moving your stop losses secure all your sell positions and if price goes on to break down the demand zone this will welcome more selling opportunities but at this point in time our center of focus for today will be between the 0 0.60410 and the 0 0.59800 area we are depending on the break the direction of the breakout today will be giving us an insight into where price is likely going to be going at least for the first half of the week so this is my view here on the new zealand usd our center of focus is between the 0 0.60410 and the 0 0.459800 area so I do encourage you to mark out these levels as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today. So let's see how this plays out. Rice Rick, are you still around? If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions whatsoever before we move on to the final asset for of uh, today's trading session.
all right all right um okay so what do we have here i can see okay um a4 vahid good morning to you um sally cory too good morning okay right so rick all right i'm very glad you found that very clear i hope you've marked out those levels as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your decisions today um max is asking what chart was this this is new zealand usd um right at the top top left hand corner of your screen you will see the um title right there and then if fell lua how are you doing i i'm very sure you're from nigeria right how are you doing today um all right so in the absence of no other questions i want to assume that we are all on the same page and in that regard we shall be moving right into um, the last asset on our watch list for today So the final asset on our watch list for today is my favorite, and that is the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Spot. And I hope Innocent Baby is around and the um, Gold fans, are you all around in the comment section? Let me know you are deep right there. So with that being said, let's run through the current market conditions. And in fact, we want to be seeing what is going on um in this market well since the beginning of the week we've been witnessing some choppy situations currently going on which further emphasize the level of indecision in the market though i'm yet to have a position at this point in time but one thing i can say here that the upward momentum of gold prices during the asian session appears to have stalled a little bit though we saw some deep buying around the 1000 973 here but it appears that we are having a limit around the 1985 which has since been negating all attempt by the buyers to break out of this structure well the potential for significant corrective movement is still very possible on this asset that is price could still do some retracement to the downside but we do not know when that is going to be uh, my goodness, I just changed my chart right here. Sorry about that. Where is my XAUSD again? So, like I was saying, the um, there could be some corrective movement here. But one thing that is of concern here is the Federal Reserve dovish expectations and the increase in consensus that the central bank will maintain its current stance at the December 2023 policy monitoring policy policy meeting and likely initiate interest rate cuts in 2024 and secondly we've seen in the last couple of days how the u.s treasury bond yield has been dropping so these are fundamentals that are likely going to be affecting the 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 the, the u.s dollar on this particular market now let's look at things from a technical standpoint let's scale up a little bit to the higher time frame let's see what is really going on from an holistic perspective before we delve into the details here so what i did at the beginning of the week was to scale up into the daily time frame and i really do not have any structure on the daily time frame except for the key level which is situated at the 1980 area now if we look at this level since the month of march of this year you will see how it had played a major role in determining the direction of price action at some point in fact most of the time it was more of selling as soon as price gets into that area though we had some little bit of buy opportunity at some point i think during the month of april stroke the month of may we saw some buy pressure before price finally broke down that structured mid month of may and since the breakdown of the 1980 you will see how that area has been known for selling pressure since that moment though we had some breakout here a couple of weeks ago but it didn't last long as price dropped further again below the 1980 and we took advantage of that move as well and then as that last week's trading session following the bullish impulsive move we saw price action got back into the 1980 
and closed at that same spot. Now, it's very important we hold this level as a, as a crucial spot as whatever happens here is going to be determining what our next line of action will be. So the question going into the new week is, will price break out of the 1980? How are we going to be seeing some buy pressure again, making that level a platform for new eyes? Or are there chances that price would drop back below the 1980? And in fact, if price drop below the 1980 this week, um, it's going to be back into the seller's territory and we shall be looking out for selling opportunities. Now, let's scale down into the four hours time frame where I was able to identify a trading setup. Now, look at the structure we have here on the four hours time frame. I was able to identify a descending channel after connecting the series of lower highs since the beginning of this month, as you will see here, giving us the resistant line of the descending channel. And then when we connect the series of lower lows, we have the support line of that descending channel. And what makes this interesting is how price action came back into the resistant line of that descending channel and then we saw a little bit of consolidation phase where price was oscillating between the 1992 and the 1980 which shares a beautiful confluence with the resistant line of that descending channel now this makes this area a very crucial point in this particular market now if we go to the past here you see price broke down the structure around this area and if price can stay below the 1980 i want to be looking out for selling opportunities so with this information we have gathered here if price will stay below the 1980 we might be looking at a tp target at the support line here which will be dovetailing to um, a minimum of 500 pips to catch if price does that, that uh, move. However, if price climbs back above the 1980 and we begin to see some buy pressure here, then we can be looking out for buying opportunity and a further breakout of the 1992 will welcome more buying opportunities. Now, let's scale down into the one hour time frame so that we can see how participants in the market has been reacting to this crucial juncture since the beginning of this week. Now, if we scale down into the one hour time frame, we'll begin to see things more clearly. As you will see, price has been trading just right around the 1,980 area, which further emphasizes the, um, the importance of the structure. Now, on the four hours time frame, I have a couple of ascending trend lines. Of course, since last week trading session, we have been buying this asset, giving us a beautiful ascending trend line to work with. And you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community. As long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we continue to look out for patterns and structures that supports the idea of buying that asset. Now, in addition to the ascending trend line, you will see that since the beginning of this week, price action has been confined within a range that is between the 1,985 level and the $1,973.50 level to emphasize the uncertainty that is going on in the market right now and of course you know how we do it in this community whenever we identify such flat channel we want to exercise patience and wait for price to either break out of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line here to give us an opportunity to sell now one interesting thing about this old structure is that remember i said on the day on the higher time frame that if price remains below the 1980 we want to be looking out for selling opportunities but right here on the one hour time frame it's clear that price action is within a range at this point so i want to look out for more confirmations and so in that regard i'm looking at the breakdown of the 1973 dollar 50 cent level has an opportunity to look out for selling opportunity and what this simply means is that if price will break down the 1973 dollar 50 cent level 
price would also have broken down the ascending trend line we marked out here, which would be the first time price would be breaking down that trend line since last week's trading session, hereby giving us a signal that the trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to negate the bearish attempt. So I'm looking out for setting opportunity at the breakdown of the ascending trend line and the $1,973.50 level. And in fact, if price action will do some retest of structure in our lower time frame, it will further confirm the strength of the sellers at this point in time. However, Inasmuch as the potentials of sellers are looking very valid here, we cannot ignore the potentials the buyers have. Remember, since last week's trading session, the momentum for buyers has been very, very strong. And before they can give up, it might take quite some significant signal before that could happen. So for me personally, I still hope, I still hold on, I still keep the idea of buying opportunity open on this asset and in fact i will be looking forward to the breakout of the 1985 level to capitalize on an uptrend move at this point in time and in fact um some people might buy right away at the 1980 but i would like some confirmations to happen give me some enough room and in fact if a breakout can happen and price retraces maybe back into the 1980 i begin to see some reversal setups i could consider adding more buy positions to my existing trade but i will need 1985 to be broken to make me feel comfortable in joining any buy positions on this particular asset so basically for today our center of focus is simple just right within the 1985 and the 1973 dollar 50 cent level we are depending on the direction the breakout happens will give us an insight into where price is likely going to be going at least for the first half of this week so these are my views here on the XAUUSD. so you do want to be marking out these levels and the trend lines so that you can be you can have something to reference on whenever you're about to make your independent trading decisions so if you have any questions whatsoever at this juncture feel free to let me know in the comment section so as usual i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we round off for today's trading session Okay, I see your comments, Innocent Babe. I'm glad you're still around. Um, Jesse Nams, um, good morning to you. Um, this name right there, I'm not sure I can pronounce the name, but you want to um, know how to invest or how to trade. Uh, well, I will say you have to do your research on this one because it will take you some time to understand trading before you can relate with us in this community, okay? So try to do some research online. There are YouTube videos and there are materials right here on this platform. You can check them out. There are resources which you can actually use to help you grow um, your trading skills. Then um, I can see, what else did I see here? Um, okay, cool 993 JV Cars. Kelsin Chris L says that can you tell me the most profitable indicator? What do you mean by that? Profitable indicator. What do you mean by that? Please, I would like you to clarify that so I know what you're talking about. Okay, CJ Daniel, good morning to you. Okay, um, Kelsin Chris L says can the MACD and trend line along with moving average work? Okay. Well, personally, you're just complicating things. For me, um, I'm an advocate of simplicity. The simpler it is, the better it is. So we only, in this community, we only use trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns. So that's, you can see my chart. There are no indicators, no other parameters here except for trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns. And they are enough for us to identify the psychology behind the price movement of, of market participants in that particular market. So 
that is for me anyways that's my own view so i don't so this is what i do all right so in the absence of no other questions i do want to assume that we are all on the same page um rb 1984 says please explain me what's the meaning of buy and sell of trading uh, well let me tell you this i will advise you to do some googling um, do some research on trading so that's because it will take quite a lot for you to get to relate with us in this community so i will encourage you to um, do some googling and in fact there are other um, resources on this platform that you can also use to um, develop your trading skills as well so that's my advice for you i'll be one nine eight four it will take some time but trust me um, with time you get to become better okay so in the absence of no other questions i want to assume we are all on the same page and in fact it has been a wonderful moment with you guys since the beginning of today's trading session and we were able to attend to four major assets today which includes the us all sports the new zealand usd the us tech 100 and of course the xa usd uh, where we were able to identify simple trading setups that we will be using to guide our decisions for today so i just encourage us all to exercise patience and wait for our setups to mature before we jump into any position and very important ensure you have a well-defined risk management strategy for every uh, positions you are taking remember that every um, decision we make is more or less an educated guess until price action eats your tp target and for those of us who are joining for the first time i do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here today and in fact i encourage you to be part of the subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us the better you will become in understanding the analytical approach and eventually be able to use the information to uh, make your own independent trading decisions so once again you are welcome on board and I look forward to seeing more of you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and at the same time prepare for tomorrow's trading session which promises to be an interesting one as we look forward to the publication of the Federal Reserve uh, FOMC meeting minute tomorrow so um i see your comments innocent babe you're welcome thanks you for the compliment um kelsin chris l says this is the first time here i'm so so glad to have you around with us and i look forward to seeing more of you as the more time you spend with us the better you will become in understanding our analytical approach and then um ricey rick oh you're welcome ricey rick and you too have a wonderful day too as well um patricia says if it breaks down is it a sell yes if it breaks down we are looking for sell opportunities below that structure breakdown and if you are not someone who takes breakdown outright breakdown you want to wait for a retest of structure for confirmation to join that is all fine too as well fufarion i see your comment glad to have you around with us i look forward to seeing you tomorrow same time 10 a.m utc 11 a.m west african time as we come back here again to review what is going on in the market so on this note i wish us all the best of luck and do have a wonderful evening bye, -bye. <laughs>